What's good is your boy Mr. Smiles and Long Island Life Nation where you get your etc. We're here with a very important person today. We're here with the King of Life in East. Nah. Not the king of life, even. <laughs> you're gonna cause a, you're gonna cause a problem. <laughs> but we're here with the um, East Solo today. Uh, many of you don't know, he's a life feed original. One of the guys in life feed that's been doing it for a long time since the dance started. Okay. Um, well, the dance started in 2006 officially, and I started taking it serious in 2007. But I always knew how to do it from growing up in the city, so since like 2000 I was Harlem shaking. But I wasn't really in the movement because I was from Brooklyn. Like tw 2007 I started like serious. How did you get your dance name, E Soto? Ah, so um, I used to call myself E Soto with a T because my name is Elijah Soto. Yeah. And then um, one day I went to Slaughtery Park. For those who don't know, that was a park in the Bronx on the D train line that um, it sparked a lot of like young people to start dancing that park. Uh, people came from all five boroughs and a whole bunch of different places just to go to that one park, including myself. So I got to the park and I would tell people my name is Isolo and they thought that I was saying Isolo. So then I ran with Isolo because there's only one me and at the time Life Feeders were wearing A solos. So I'm kind of named after the boot and because there's only one Isolo. Wow, you know what I, mean? I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> it's named after the sneaker. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. How has Life Feed affected your life? Like, how does Life Feed make you feel when you dance? You know? Um, I think you know I've always been into the arts. Before I was dancing, I was a musician. I went, I played the trumpet. Now, for a long time, since I was in the sixth grade, I've been playing trumpet. Since I was six years old, I played piano. I've been singing since I was born. I've always done art. I grew up with a family of um, visual arts. When I found Life Feet, it gave me a new purpose. And it, um, I think it, it kind of helped me find myself as a person. And it helped me realize that, um, that I don't have to take the regular route and just make the art a side thing. And I don't have to necessarily take the generic route that a dancer usually takes of being a background dancer or something. And I can make life be a career the way I want it to be a career. You know what I mean? So I learned how to be a businessman through life be, um, a dancer, a whole bunch of things. Now I'm learning how to be a producer because of life be, a cameraman because of life be. Just because of that dance, I'm, I'm just finding myself more and more. And I, and I stay true to myself now more than ever. You know what I mean? Because of life be. Life is created a lot of opportunities yeah. for a lot of people. Totally. And open doors. I know it affected me. You know, it made me do camera work. You know, yeah, exactly. Get into music, even mm -hmm. though I'm not a producer. You know what I'm saying? Um, another question I have for you is what do you think about Life Feet right now? You know, and what do you think about the future of Life Feet? I think we're in a weird place. Um, there are three, it's just weird. It's not bad and it's not good. It's not bad. Um, there's three eras of life feed. There's the golden era, which is from 06 to um, like the end of 08. Uh, like, the, like 06, yeah, 06 to like the end of 08. And then from 09 to 2012 is like the underground movement. And then from 2013 till now is the, um, like the media movement. Like the, the, the movement of us getting older and making life be the job and, and growing up. I'm not sure if it's the media movement, but it's like kind of like a maturing movement. You know what I mean? Within this time period of, of life from 2013 to 2017, um, a lot of people have gotten older and stopped dancing from the underground movement. Um, a lot of young people are, are jumping into it again, but in a different way. A lot more people are dancing on the trains now, and a lot of original dancers are trying to work and make a name for themselves and, and grow with this dance and not just let it fall behind. Because of that, we're in a weird like 
frenzy right now. We're in a weird place to like try to be better than each other in a weird way. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of separation because everybody's trying to, to make moves and to, to be better than each other, but not in a dance way anymore, like the underground era in terms of a moves way or in a money way. You know, if you're a 13 year old kid and you see you can make money dancing, why wouldn't you, right? So that's why we have a lot of young kids now dancing on the trains. And if you're older and, and you see that you can make a career out of this, why wouldn't you, you know what exactly. I mean? So, and also I feel like there's a lot of people that don't take this dance as serious anymore in terms of the actual dance, you know what I mean? This is fact, this is the truth right here, listen. In this era, because, because before when I was coming up on D. Cole, if you, um, did one wrong move or something, you got sent home. And you were considered like one of the worst dancers. Like you couldn't mess up. And for me, I was from Brooklyn. I couldn't get songs. I couldn't um, be in the Bronx meeting people. I had to go there, you know what I mean? I went to school in Manhattan, thank God. That's how I found out about Lifey. And in Harlem, I used to um, be with my friend who does African drums at Millbank. So that's how I was able to see a lot of things. I went to a lot of the team parties. I went to Club Deep. I went to Avalon where a lot of people were, but I had to get my name up like everybody else. I was a rookie and I had to get my name up the hard way and it was much harder. And I think that's what gave me the passion. But I think now, you know, I feel like this generation feels like the older people have to do stuff for them. And nobody is gonna do anything for you in this world. You gotta do it yourself. You know what I mean? If you want, uh, you want people to like you, you gotta make them like you. And that's just what it is. And a lot of people, they, they don't wanna do it the right way. The only thing that works is work. It's not, it's not talking, it's not posting in the Life e Nation chat, it's not making a nice quick video and getting a million likes from it, it's from having quotables. It's from, from doing things that people will remember and pushing yourself to a, the next level that you might not have pushed yourself before and taking the time. Everybody from the underground movement and down, I guarantee you, was in their house for hours, for days, training, 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 training. And if they say they didn't, they're lying. Everybody I know from those generations, you should just, just eat, breathe, sleep this. Like work on just one move for hours just to get it. You know what I mean? And I feel like there isn't the same ambition. Same thing with producing. Look at what Kid the Wiz did. Or Larry or D Sparks, everything from that generation. They they took what um, SNS, D Cole, and Naka made and they, they flipped it and changed it into the next thing. You know what I mean? So and the same thing with camera work too. Look at look at what J Rockets did. J Rockets started bringing and and Getty. Um, they started bringing like high def, especially Getty, and that, I think those two really, like they started bringing the high def camera work, like real camera producing into the game, you know what I mean? Like D. Cole did it, but it wasn't people from like the community doing it. It was just D. Cole and Sheen, you know what I mean? They had the stuff, but it, weren't, it wasn't that many others. When Swiss and Space were doing it, they had a little digital camera, like, and J Rock has picked it up and he brought it to the next level. Getty picked it up and brought it to the next level, doing two cameras, three cameras, um, adding graphics to videos, like all sorts of things like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, I just think more people gotta take it serious and we're just in a weird place right now, trying to look cool but not actually being cool. But I do feel like there's a lot of talented people too. Yeah. Um, and I, I do like the new style. A lot of people are against it and I like it. I wish that people just knew how to make it into their own thing. I think the new style is fantastic. I like the new style of Light Feet, but to, for me to see the people do the same exact moves and not really upgrade it in a crazy way, I'm not really too fond of it. But I do like a lot of young dancers of Jay Wavy, Smooth 40, Radar, Doc Jr., uh, my boy Zigzag, um, Moonlight, um, Double A, you know, like people like like if you're talking about like anybody from like 18 to 21, like like those cats. Like I, I like watching all those cats. Um, I'm trying to think who else. I live for sure. He's really talented. There's a whole bunch of young people that I do like have faith in to grow it. Um, Boy Nice is another one. He's really spanky. Um, Fire Flames, Ace Nitro, Ace Rabbit. 
like anybody from like that that next generation, like there's a whole bunch of nice people that you gotta watch. Like I think there's a lot of talent as well, Fox 5. There's a lot of talent, you know what I mean? So I'm not gonna sit here and hate on another generation just because of, of the work ethic, because there are people that are working. Another question I have for you is what are your thoughts on the international like people? I'm talking about uh, like countries such as Japan, Argentina, France. What do you think um, about that? It's a shaky situation. Um, it's exciting, but then it's, it's, you have to learn how to control it. The people up top, like, like that teach, or the people up top that perform. So like the teachers would be like myself, yeah. um, Crybaby, Silencer, Richie Rich, like people like that. The performers being like uh, Waffle, Too Real, everything. They have to stay on it and make sure that they are the face and make sure that the right information is being sent to these other countries and make sure that there's a good relationship between the international people and the, um, the, the people from New York. Because there will be some people internationally that will try to learn this dance because they know not too many people from their country know it and learn it so that they could be lit and get business and, and, and try to look like they made up the style. You know what I mean? So you have to make sure that you um, constantly put your foot down and, and, um, and make sure that the, the style isn't tainted. You know what I mean? Um, I shouldn't have to pay to go to another country to teach this dance. You pay for me, you pay for my hotel, you pay for my services, and you learn the dance. I should, like people like me, the sources, or like, especially, especially Crybaby, Mr. YouTube, Spaceman, um, people like um, Kid Pat, Mr. Jones, like, like that, like people from like the first, 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 first generation, uh, also like people from the Dark Wars generation, like myself, Fly Boogie, um, Hype Star, anybody from Waffle, like Ty Live, Kid The Wiz, like all those people, like, those should be sources that you go to, you know what I mean? And those should be the face of Life Feed in your country. You could be the leader and stuff, but at the end of the day, you still answer to us. So there still has to be a relationship there. But on the positive note, I'm very excited. I think it's great that we have a bigger movement. Um, other countries get funded more for dancing and the arts. Obviously, we ain't making shit out here. I gotta bust my ass to get money to fucking Seriously. dance out here. But when you go to um, other countries, like their government will fund dance events and programs out there in the other countries. So it's exciting because we get uh, bigger opportunities to create bigger venues, bigger movements, and spread the style in a positive way. So it's exciting, it's great to make new friends and new experiences. Like I've traveled a whole bunch of places. I'll be traveling um, to South America this year. I'll be traveling statewide. I went to Europe a few times. I went to Canada last year. Like it's great, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's very exciting to meet new people and, and and spread this style. Just like I said, just make sure you have your foot down and have a hold on the dance as a source. So I've seen uh, multiple people, multiple people just in different countries just like exposing the whole life mm -hmm. style. And, you know, I've seen, you know, I even showed him on the train. Well, yeah. you guys don't see him, he's behind the camera. But I showed uh, my boy, Mike Fresh, you know, just songs on SoundCloud, you know, Astro Sparks, Lil Live, Top Flight, you know what I'm saying? People are just stealing their songs. DJs just taking their songs and putting their names on it. Yeah. And it's, you know, this. Yeah, they did that with Kitty too, yeah. But you gotta just, that's why you gotta just make sure you own it and, and, and people know who you are. And that's a, uh, another issue is like, I feel like, like what well, goes back to the first issue is that people aren't gonna do the work for you. You gotta do the work. Exactly. And you gotta make sure that they know who you are. That's why Waffle is doing so well now. That's why, like, me and my friends that teach, we're doing pretty well now, you know what I mean? I want more, so I'm greedy, you know what I mean? But I that's why we're doing good now, because we, we did the work to make sure. Nobody's gonna do the work for you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you that. Nobody is gonna help you get moves, nobody is gonna help you uh, um, get a teaching job, or, or get a show, or, or you know what I mean, or travel or anything. Nobody's gonna help you do that. You gotta help you do that. 
You know, and that's it. Whether you like it or not. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's a fact. What do you think about our movement? What do you think about Long Island Light Feet? I mean, I've always been a fan of Long Island Light Feet. I used to go to um, um, Area 51 back in the day. Um, I, always, I like, I, like, I remember like the original teams like Livelihood, Wise Guys, um, before even Transformers, like, like, yeah, like all of those people, LIA, um, like all those teams. And I was always a fan of the Long Island movement. Um, big ups to like the originals, um, of course, Guzzy, um, Stugs, Rico, um, Top Villain, K Boogie, Morley G, Mr. Incredible, um, Too Easy. You know, like people like that, like I used to really watch Stretch. I'm not sure how many people know about Stretch. And like, and then there was like the second generation, like his generation with him, X Live. Um, all those cats from that second generation was really cool during the underground movement. I was always a fan of the Long Island movement. I think it's cool now that there's a lot of unity again. Oh, and shout out to the girls too, K Shy, Bree Bugs, Me yeah. Star, like all those people, like they was, they was there for that original movement. I think it's good that there's unity in Long Island and people are coming from different parts of Long Island to train and keep this movement going. I, and you know, I just think that you guys just have to have more communication and, and just make sure you re really keep that real essence of, of what Life Feed is, you know what I mean? And having people like Top Villains still come around and support events or Guzzy or, or like people like that, like you'll, you'll definitely get like that first essence of what Life Feed is and be able to work with it, you know what I mean? But I've always loved uh, Long Island. I used to go to Long Island all the time to Mr. Incredible's crib, to like the original events that they used to have out there. You know what I mean? I was always a fan. <laughs> That's all the time we have today. This is uh, East Solo. Life to mark it up, man. You know what I'm saying? Long Island Life Nation up, Life Nation up. Life Nation you know up, saying? man. Every, every nation the up. The whole man. nation. The whole nation. And big ups to all the teams out there. Every, every team, every team. I got no issues with any team. It's all love. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know how people feel about me, but people aren't gonna like the guys that work. You know what I mean? And there's always gonna be those people that's up top that you wonder why they're there, but there's, you can't wonder why I'm here. Y'all know why I'm here. You know what I mean? So that's about it, it you know, and I'm proud of it. It might, it might come off as cocky or whatever, but I'm proud of what I've done. So that's it, but big ups to everybody. Big ups to this guy. Big ups to Mike behind the camera too. You already, you already know. know why I'm here, too. <laughs> to give you life feed content. Original. Exactly. exactly.